Thank you for tuning in to the Law Nation Film Session. As we take a quick look at Tonko Charlton, first and foremost, I want to point out his comparison that I made at the first of the year, Chandler Jones. Uh, this is his rookie year, 2013. Uh, same frame almost, a little shorter than Chandler is, and uh, but the same weight same uh, type of prospect coming out of college he got this range and, and just not the fastest guy in the world but he was able to get to the quarterback and those are things that you want to have out there on the field the reason why i'm making this comparison is that we will be insane to say that uh taco charlton season is already in the history book it takes about three to four years before a defensive end or anybody coming off the line to be an explosive uh, dynamic type of uh, pressure point now this is not a quality sack yes we all know that but it's a sack it goes down in the history book and those are things that i like to see out there the uh, the disengagement the continuous process of going out to the quarterback now granted you know taco charging is only getting 20 some snaps a game so he's not getting the, the snaps of games that Chandler Jones was getting, and he's not playing with the lead ahead like the uh, uh, New England Patriots are or were playing during that time. This is Chandler Jones' second year, and as we saw, the production was just sky high. He averaged, what, maybe eight to nine sacks a, a year almost if you look at his uh, – profile collectively i think he averaged 11 sacks well not average but had 11 sacks his second year not saying that taco is going to have that type of productivity that's just insane for me to say but uh his skill set and the tenacity and the temperament those are things that i look at and those intangibles and that type of pedigree is what i'm seeing out of taco regardless of the scenario of what whether or not he's a a bust or not he, he has those type of uh uh, ingredients flying up to the ball being going up field not giving up on plays now once he get his play legs up under him get the weight and frame and shift and, and keep it balanced on, under him maybe we'll see some more of these comparisons down the line but in the meantime in the between time that's been my time i really thank you guys for yours and remember you're listening to nothing but the bass salute i'm out peace I'm doing this right now for evaluation's sake. I want to kind of, I guess, let you in on the process a little bit. And I want to go to, to Taco Charlton from Michigan. I talked about, I watched Taco, I uh, wrote down all my notes on him. And with Taco Charlton, you see a player with unbelievable traits, long legs, long arms, great explosiveness up the field. He's got that twitch. He's got physical traits that are exceptional and NFL teams love physical traits now a lot of people are going to say well that's stupid because you need to tell me if you can play football one of the biggest mistakes that I made and many of us make this on a everyday basis is to evaluate a player based on who he is now versus who he's going to be now you you look at a baseball outfielder who's 26 you know I think you can make a reasonable assumption about who that baseball player is going to be in two three four years in many cases. But if we're talking about a defensive end who's 20, 21 years old, to think that who he is now is going to be who he is when he's 24 years old after NFL weight room, NFL meetings, NFL coaching, working 100% on his game as opposed to being in classrooms and maybe not having the same training table, uh, that's a mistake. Now, I'm not saying every player gets better in the NFL. That's not the case. There are some players who are maxed out. I know Alabama has been criticized, they have been criticized, but in draft circles there's a lot of talk about when you get an Alabama player, you're getting a well-coached player who's going to be technically proficient, who's going to be bigger than a lot of the other guys, but they're also going to be kind of maxed out. Like there's not a lot of room for growth with Alabama players. That's been what people in the NFL say, and it's a testament to Coach Saban and his staff, but the idea is what you see is what you get. When you're projecting, if you take what, see, when you take what Jonathan Allen does right now, you think he's going to get a lot better in pros? I don't. I think he's going to be very good in the pros, but he's very good right now. And why is he going to get much better? I mean, his technique is fantastic. I, I don't know that anyone else is going to be able to show him. You can show him a few more tricks, but this is already a dude. Jonathan Allen is a dude. I'd argue that Tim Williams could get a lot better. 
He's got physical traits and ability, but he's still raw. I think he can get better. But I think Jonathan Allen's going to be a great player, a very good to great player in the NFL, but that's who he is right now. I mean, I think that you could argue that he's kind of maxed out in the sense that he is who he is because he's gotten the coaching and he's that kind of worker. Taco Charlton, defensive end for Michigan, is different to me. I see traits. I see flashes. I don't see dominant pass rusher just yet, but I see dominant flashes and dominant potential. And one of the big mistakes that I made in terms of my own you know, amateur evaluating was believing that Chandler Jones was overrated when he was coming out of Syracuse. I saw, I saw the long limbs. I saw the potential. But I spent too much time worrying about who he was right now. Well, who is he right now? Well, I don't see it. We have to be able to see who they're going to be, and that isn't easy. Projecting who a player is going to be, the only way you can truly do that is if you have had experience watching somebody grow from being 30% of the player they could be to 80 90 100% of the player they're going to be. Now, you don't have to work for an NFL team to do that. You can... And this is what you want to do. And so you spend the time. You go on draft breakdown and watch the cutups. You read the stuff on NFL.com, ESPN, or whatever. And what I would tell you is just pay attention to guys who come into the league raw and then where they end up. Because you'll end up seeing players that you say, boy, I never would have thought this guy would have been this good. I mean, yeah, I knew he was fast, but I thought he was overrated and overdrafted. And what you'll find out is that traits... If a player can take coaching, those traits can be activated and those players can get really good. I believe that's going to happen with Taco Charlton. I think Taco Charlton is the next Chandler Jones. I believe that Taco Charlton, it's going to eventually hit for him. Now, he's playing good football right now, but I believe that it's going to hit for him where he's going to understand his length. He's going to play with better balance because he's always playing with so much forward lean around the corner that you know he has a hard time keeping his balance sometime. I see... Rip moves. I see the ability to turn and bend the edge. Um, I think he'll learn how to get under people's pads and bull rush them a little bit and convert speed to power. He's slippery enough to to have inside moves. I think Chandler, Chandler, I think uh, Taco Charlton, what I see is long arms and legs that are going to help him get over the corner of a tackle. I see explosiveness up the field that is going to be refined with coaching so that he takes a little tighter route to the quarterback with better footwork and an understanding of how to use his hands better at the top of a rush. I see a player with a spin move back inside that can become a devastating weapon once he gets his edge rushing tightened up like we just talked about. Because once a tackle is afraid of a guy beating him around the edge, they start to overset and overcompensate. That's where that spin move and inside move can really become devastating. So to me, when I see the burst, the explosion, some of the pass rushing moves and traits, the spin move, and then I think about what's going to happen as that guy grows into his body even more and it's not, you know, it isn't so much of a cult trying to grow into his long legs and he gets more coaching and he gets hand work. Now, you also need to find out, if you can, about a player's work ethic and if they're the kind of guy that loves the game and will continue to work on it. That's what NFL teams have that advantage more so than I do. Um, If you find out that he has these traits and he's a hard worker and has good football character, then I think you absolutely fire it. I think Taco's got a chance to be a great NFL rusher, a good to great NFL rusher. Taco has the ability to be an even higher end player. So pulling the curtain back a little bit on potential and how to project where a player could go. Do they have the ability to get substantially better because of their physical traits? That's what you want to see. That's how you know you have a higher ceiling on a player.